Hey guys, my name is Mavi, and for the last 14 years, I've worked in the plastic surgery industry under top board certified plastic surgeons. In that time, I have gained extensive knowledge about surgical procedures, pre and post op care, as well as non invasive or minimally invasive treatments. My passion to educate and help women feel empowered in their surgical decisions led to what we now know as the Big Butts No Lies podcast. Join in on the fun as I chat with plastic surgery experts, friends, and real life patients about all things plastic surgery. Should be fun. Hey guys, I'm so happy to be back with you today. If you thought that you were getting treated in the last episodes, you are in for a treat today. I was able to bring two women who are just as equally passionate about plastic surgery as me. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> so we have Annalisa. Hello. <laughs> and Melody. Hi. Melody, why don't you tell our listeners about yourself? So I have been in the aesthetic business for over 16 years now. I have helped thousands of people reach their image goals with weight loss, teeth, Plastic surgery is definitely my favorite, as well as non-invasive procedures. And my latest and greatest is I work for Care Credit. And so now I'm able to help thousands of patients at one time through the best providers in the world here in Houston, Texas. That's awesome. That's awesome. She's great. I'm telling you guys, (laughs) she is a gem. And y'all will understand with today's topic why it's so important to have people who know the industry and can kind of give you those tips and tricks that you don't know that you need. Yeah, you don't know to ask. You don't know to ask. So I thought today would be a good idea for us to go over what a typical quote looks like, what they're looking at, what the extras are, you know, kind of walk them through what is included in their quote and giving them that number at the bottom. So Annalisa. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. I think we've touched base on this a little bit, but I think every practice is different. I think you both can agree on that, right? Absolutely. So what we really want is to itemize everything out. So the patient can kind of pick and choose what they want after learning about it. Mm -hmm. But in the end, they have to figure out if it's cost effective (laughs) and which practice, you know, that they're going with, what their percentage is. So if you could speak on care credit, as far as our practice, it's six months at 0% and they'll come out and they'll say, oh, well, another practice is 12 months. And we're like, but our practice is contracted with six months at 0% interest. So that's something that every practice is different. So you have to ask that ahead of time. Because even though your dentist did 12 months, doesn't mean that your surgeon is going to do 12 months. That's right. And you'll have a vet who does 24 months of hard interest. And so your expectations might not be aligned with what that doctor is Mm -hmm. going to offer. Exactly. Exactly. Okay. So let's say that a patient has received their quote. What is the number one thing that you think they should look at? I think the uh, what's included. So anesthesia. That's a big thing because you don't want to get an extra outside bill after surgery. The OR costs, supplies, materials, anything like garments or perineal tape or Expirel or anything like that. Definitely. And when their procedures are listed out, Mm -hmm. what's something that you would tell our listeners to make sure? I would say just review it and go line item by item because even if just for instance, you're going to do a quad bluff. So upper and lower eyelid. Are you doing upper or lower or both? You know, like those are like specific to the patient. Mm -hmm. So everyone is different when it comes to that. So are we talking a mommy makeover and you're saying tummy tuck and different areas of liposuction? So make sure all of those areas are included. So it just depends, but making sure that they're itemized out so you know how to kind of pick and choose what you want after learning about it. Make sure it's listed. So Uh if you have, if you're doing liposuction and your surgeon says liposuction 360 and you can just make sure that you, it's listed out abdomen, flanks. Yeah. And everyone's like, that's another thing too. Everyone's like, what's 360? Right. <laughs> yes. Yeah. The, they'll Google and there's, they'll say liposuction 360 and they'll call into our call center 
And we're like, well, that's the whole waist, you know? (laughs) And then they're like, well, what about my arms? What about my thighs? You know? And it's like, well, if you're saying 360, 360 for us with a tummy tuck is flanks, abdomen. Yeah. Like your whole core, basically. And it doesn't include your arms or your legs, you know? So, so that if you want that, out. it needs to be, exactly. It needs to be listed out. You can see how somebody who, if they don't know, they would totally feel that 360 means everywhere around. Yeah. Right? Everywhere, so, like everywhere, everywhere in the body. It's like 360 yeah. degrees, oh, good you know? Point. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah, no, they call in and I'm like, like no, because I'm like 360. I'm like, okay, that's like around the waist, you know, the body area, but not the arms or the legs. That's good. a good point. Melody. Yeah. You Thank did, you for you that. Bring a good yes. <laughs> also, so for you guys, does that include the axilla? Because that's something that no. some doctors include for 360 and it's standard. No. Okay. See, so and, this is what is so important for you to, when you're looking uh-huh. at your quote, really look at your quote and be honest with yourself to if what's on that quote is what's going to make you happy. If your surgeon told you, you need a tummy tuck, flank and back lipo to give you the shape that you want. But maybe that price is a little bit out of your budget now. And yeah. you're going to choose to just do the tummy tuck and not do the flank lipo or not do the back. <laughs> I Sorry to cut you off, but I was like, a good question to ask too is like, how much more is it? Because once we're in there, it's it's more cost effective for the patient to do a couple other areas. Like yes. literally 700 bucks. So that's what I want. That's where I was going to. Uh If you are cutting corners, corners, Mm -hmm. you might not be happy with the result. And then you might be unhappy with your surgeon uh, for them not doing or you don't look the way you thought you were going to look. But it's because you took off the flank life or the back life. But a lot of times the great surgeons, they'll say, nope, you can't take that off. That's going to be included. Like if you're doing the tummy tuck, you're doing the flanks. Like it goes together because you're not going to have a flat tummy and a fluffy waist. <laughs> that doesn't make it's sense. Very, you're walking around as a billboard and you're saying, OK, this looks great, but this not so much. See, but some surgeons do let you. Yeah. So that's why I said the off. great surgeons. <laughs> <laughs> that was the key. <laughs> Anytime somebody in my life is like, oh, I'm getting a tummy tuck. I'm great. What areas are you getting lipo? And they tell me, no, yeah. I'm not getting lipo. Who's doing your surgery and why uh-huh. aren't you doing lipo? Yeah. If you're it, more, the question should be like, are you sure that the way women who don't have that is the look that you're going for? That's a great way to put yeah. it. Yeah. Because it's really what your final result is. What do you want to look like mm-hmm. after, after all of your surgery, when you're healed and you're ready and you're ready to dress up? Yeah. What do you want to look like? So it, that's when you have to, okay, look at your quote. When I'm telling you guys, Make sure you have all your ducks in a row and being honest with yourself and what is really going to make you happy. So if now looking at this quote and it's way out of your budget, but you want to do something, my suggestion would be to wait and save (laughs) until you have enough. Do it right the first time. Yeah. To do what your surgeon is suggesting you to get you to your final result instead of cutting corners. Corners. Agreed. I'm glad we agree on that. Yeah. (laughs) I think we've all seen unhappy patients, right? Pretty much. And it's good because we've seen those and we can kind of relate. But at the same time, it's like we put ourselves in that position and we don't want a patient to ever feel unhappy. Right. I mean, what's this is elective. It's elective. don't have to do this. I mean... Well, if, I mean, yeah, <laughs> if it's going to make subjective. you happy, that's subjective. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's subjective. <laughs> but what I, w- the point I want to get across <laughs> is do your homework, be write down your, like take a, your goal picture mm-hmm. and then take your own picture and do kind of imagine in your mind what your body would look like if you had the proceed, you know, the procedures mm-hmm. done. And if you took some of those procedures off, what it would look like. Yeah, that's great, Mobby. <laughs> I mean, honestly, well, because they come in thinking that they want one thing, they get educated. And then once they're educated, then they're worried about finance. And then it goes to like, what can I penny pinch? Yeah. You right. know, so 
You have to. I know that this is not the thing to penny pinch though. No, it's not. You know, when you're looking for a contractor, when you're looking, you know, for, yeah. for a car or something, but this is your body. And if, yeah. if it was heart surgery, we would not be looking for the cheapest solution <laughs> Absolutely. for the best solution. Right. Yeah. And you can't see your heart. <laughs> right. <laughs> good, good point. point. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I agree. Okay. Mm-hmm. So let's move on to we tell them make sure that the procedures are listed out, that everything that you and your surgeon talked about is on there. If it's not on there, you're not getting it. If it's right. not on there, you're not getting it. If they're telling you, get it in writing. Yeah. <laughs> it has you to can. be on your And quote. just ask too, because that's going to make you feel more comfortable for the recovery. Because mm-hmm. if you know you have an extra garment, you're not worried. Oh my gosh, I have to go get another garment. Yes, that's true. You know, so like simple things. The next thing that you'll see on your quote typically is your hospital or facility fee. Mm-hmm. So... Do you want to tell us usually so, how that works? Yeah. So for the practice that I work for, they have their own surgical facility that's accredited by the state, Quad AFS certified. <laughs> <laughs> but it is accredited by the state. So meaning it's hospital grade. We just are not connected like physically to the hospital, even though we have privileges down the street. Mm-hmm. But that's a great question to ask your physician, because if knock on wood, God forbid something were to happen, what happens if you have to get transferred to a hospital after surgery? But also, too, with hospitals, they're going to send you an outside bill, typically, if the surgeon goes over their time. Definitely. And with us, if the surgeon goes over, the surgeon fits the bill. You know? Yeah. So... We plan everything 10 days before surgery, paid in full. And if the surgeon wants to take more time, then he takes more time or she takes more time and the patient doesn't see that. Versus a hospital, you're still going to get that outside bill, from my understanding. I don't mm-hmm. know about you. I've never, have you? I've never experienced that. Uh-huh. However, the doctors that I was with, they had a contract mm-hmm. with, the, with the hospital so that that was not an issue. Yeah. Well, that's great. I mean, I've had a couple patients come in and they're like, oh my gosh, you know, I get charged for biopsies afterwards, which we do. You know, if you have breast reconstruction or we're doing a breast lift or something like that, we're going to send some of your tissue to pathology. And that's an and extra bill. And that's an extra bill. But we let you know that up front. So it's not a surprise from Quest, you know, like mm-hmm. in the mail. So I know with the practice that I was with before, we did do surgeries out of the hospital. Mm-hmm. I know a lot of patients felt comfortable in that and being in the hospital setting. And some patients don't like it at all. Some patients want to be in a you know outpatient facility. The most important thing that I think to ask is when you're paying your doctor's office, are they paying your anesthesia and your facility? Yeah. Make sure that you are not looking at a quote for $10,000 and then you're like, great, this is way less than I thought it was going to be. This is perfect. Sign me up. And then, you know, come after surgery or close to surgery, you realize, oh, you also have to pay another 7000 to your hospital and your yeah. anesthesiologist. The best thing and the easiest thing to do is just say, hey, what else is included? That's it. That's all you have to say is. What else is included? Prescriptions. That's another thing. That prescriptions are, are usually by... Uh, you can go through your insurance. Your pharmacy. Yeah, exactly. So, but that's an outside cost. And for someone that's penny pinching or that they don't have those funds, they're not anticipating another $200 on top of their surgery. Mm-hmm. That's right. Or they don't have an insurance to go through. So you still have to factor that in. So I think the easiest thing is just ask what else... Is included. Is included. What else am I going to have to pay for that is not on this price fee? Perfect. Did y'all hear that? (laughs) Those are the questions to ask. Okay. So now that we're telling our listeners, ask what's included. What are some of the things that are included usually? Right. So Melody, what do you think? I would say definitely uh, ask, make sure those facility fees and those anesthesia fees we talked about, but ask about that first garment Mm -hmm. or uh, the first bra, second garment as well. 
also like Xperl. Xperl. Yeah. Talk about Xperl because that is a gift. It is. That is. <laughs> we give it at cost, and oh my gosh, it can it can take your recovery from, you know, s- something easy. And no, I'm not an advocate for them, but I am an advocate because I've had it before. <laughs> yes, yes. But you can reach out if you want to. <laughs> <laughs> but it has saved so many patients. I think too, because patients feel more comfortable afterwards because they're not having to take so much pain medication mm-hmm. those first 72 hours because mm-hmm. it basically numbs the area that you had surgery, liposuction, tummy tuck, whatever. And they're not having to take the pain medication, which I know, sorry, this is off track. It makes you constipated, yes. right? Or if you're nauseous from the anesthesia, yeah, you can't take it. You can't. Right. Yeah. So, you know, those simple things like that, when a surgeon just automatically includes it at cost is gold. It's gold. Honestly, I think Exparel if you're having a tummy tuck, absolutely, you have to get Expro. <laughs> I know they're like, oh, is it worth the, f- I, what is it, 500? It's, it's about four to 500 bucks. Yeah, is it worth depending. it? Yeah. And in my opinion, honestly, it is. It, it makes <laughs> There's no question. so yeah. much easier. I mean, there when really you're having to worry question. about your garment and some doctors use drains, yuck, right? <laughs> 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 so you're dealing with garments, constipation drains, pain, sleeping, like there's so many, there's fac- so many things, you know, so many factors. And it's like, if you can X nay or X nay one, it's like, it's going to make your recovery that much better. <laughs> and I think <laughs> having a doctor that offers it. Yes. Let's, you know, I'm in the right place. Oh, that's right? a good point. Cause there are Just so many off the who bat. don't even offer it at all, Mm-mm. let alone as an add on. Yeah. You know, I wonder where, if the doctors are older like more old school if they're on it like on that expert boat like the younger doctors who are you know Mm -hmm. getting out of training with I don't think it's more age because you have older doctors who are on it and they are they want to know the latest and greatest yeah and once they had the curve I think Mm -hmm. it's just a matter of are they complacent yeah and to some of them they're like oh and a pity pinch just like the patient that's yes. True. So yes. they're going to penny pinch there. But you have to think about afterwards, what's going to make the patient more comfortable, happy, long term. Like our practice, we do home care visits afterwards, complimentary. If Which you're is- in the Houston zip codes, you know, mm-hmm. a lot of practices make the patient come in for their first day follow up mm-hmm. to say, hey, you're doing great. Go back home. <laughs> and it's like, now with COVID, I'm like, can you do telemedicine and just tell me I'm doing okay? You know, yep. like I don't have to co- get in the car, travel across town, wait in your waiting room, wait for the appointment mm-hmm. for you to be like, you're doing great. Go home. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I think it, it kind of, this is a spot where you separate practices that are more Concierge, uh-huh. concierge, mm-hmm. yes, that are I agree to help you and your recovery, you know, go as smooth as possible. And there's practices that have thought about everything, and mm-hmm. they're holding your hand in every step of the way, kind of like ACPS. Yeah, and I have an analogy for that. What is Let's it? go. I'd say for coffee or shopping, which one you want to do? Coffee, coffee or shopping? Coffee. Yeah, coffee I or shopping. Want to go shopping. Shopping. All right. So you're gonna have your practice is okay. sex. Okay. okay. Yes, I agree with that. Then you're going to have other practices that are Macy's. Right. Mm-hmm. Okay. And then you have Target. Mm-hmm. Yes. Right. So. And then you'll have. You're giving me an aha right now. <laughs> and then I mean, have... then you have the corner store. Yeah. But we sure. run from those, right? Yeah. The corner store, you walk like, in, it's, no, it's this the is music. Elective. Yeah. <laughs> yes. It's the music you don't, you never heard that song before. You, you don't know the language. It's a foreign place, mm-hmm. right? So sure. I, I do believe that you get what you pay for. And when you go to Saks. You're going to get that experience, yeah, right? Exactly. If you go to Target, you're going. You might get what you want, but it's not going to be the same quality. True. It's not the same quality. Absolutely. No. That's definitely. I I really really like. That okay, analogy. so coffee or coffee would be the corner store like Bucky's. Okay. Versus Dunkin' Donuts or Starbucks because uh, when okay. my guy at Starbucks sees my car pull up, I literally just say good morning, and he says good morning, Melody. Here's your coffee. Yep. Here's your yeah. are, are we doing gra- what kind of day are we having? Grande or venti? I love and it. And I 
Yes. And I have yeah. my two cups of coffee. Yeah. It's the same <laughs> place when you go to a restaurant. Like I know like on a Monday night or Tuesday night and I'm like so tired and you know, those are the tough days for me. And I sit down, you know, I have this place in the Heights that is awesome. And I can literally, like you said, just sit down. They already know what I want. Yes. <laughs> they know what I want to drink. They know what I want to eat. I don't even have to ask them. I can pull out my laptop and start working. Mm -hmm. You know, they don't even care. They even ask me, hey, do you need a charger? <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's how so you know. That's, that's how, how you know. know. It's good. Yeah. And you I go back, that right? And, and you will and go you, back every time. I will go back every time. Right. I agree. Yeah. I love that analogy. Thank and you for that. You know, it's very important for you to notice which mm -hmm. practices are like that and which practices are not. Which practices are worried more about the quality of their work instead of the quantity of how many they're doing. They're right. So focused on doing like each a, one. What is it called? Like a chop shop? Or like yes. a chop shop. Chop yeah. shop. Yes. Yeah. It's like they're just milling them through. Yeah. True. You know, like you're just the number. I think you should ask if they say, okay, you're the third surgery of the day of how many? Yeah. Of how many? Yeah. Like how many is he going to do that day or she yeah. going to do that day? If yeah. you're, if your surgery is supposed, and I only know this, I haven't seen it in person. I've never seen it in any of the practices that I've worked for, but I've heard about it from patients in these Facebook groups mm -hmm. where somebody was like, my surgery time is at five o'clock PM. And I'm what? Yeah. And somebody else was like, mine's at seven PM. <gasps> No way. Yes. Mm -hmm. What time? Do, I mean, if you how, think of, how can your surgeon be giving you top quality I mean, work at the 7 p.m.? OK, so with that said, you know, top surgeons, they've been doing this for 20 to 30 years. OK, but you know but what they, I mean? And no, I do know what you mean. You're they're just throwing them on. Right. They're just throwing them. No, yeah. If they're doing but if they're doing 10 surgeries in one day. No, on, absolutely you not. You are not. You are a number. You You're are not a, a patient. Number. You are literally a number. A lot of doctors too, but you have to be careful with that because if a surgeon does maybe, you know, tiny surgeries, they can do five to six tiny surgeries. Mm -hmm. sure. But if it's like a full mommy makeover and yeah. it's, then it's two surgeries for the day, Yeah, you know, or three surgeries, depending mm -hmm. on what that mommy makeover is. But if it's just a BAM, a rhino, and they're single cases. Mm -hmm. Those typically take an hour and a half to two hours. But for example, I'm talking about yeah. down. No, I know what you mean. You know, because if you your know. arrival time is five <laughs> o'clock uh, and you can't eat or drink anything after midnight, yeah, that's a tough day. They will adjust it though, so they'll tell you nothing to eat or drink after five a.m. Sometimes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and then I think like if when does the doctor have time to eat or drink? That's a good point. The, yeah. Well, then the then comes up the point that I know a lot of women have seen and have questioned is, was my surgeon the one doing my surgery mm -hmm. or was it somebody else? Ooh. Because they're seeing uneven sides. They're seeing completely different work, like on one side compared to the other. And they're questions, yeah. of course, like or and what happened? You can sit and, and that's why the communication is important ahead of time, because, you know, the practice you know, and just ask that question. I mean, it's of straight up. I mean, it is what it is. It is so. what it is. I, these women that I've, I'm sorry, these women that I've seen in these groups, yeah. they can't get a hold of anybody in the yeah. office. They're yeah. like, those are, they only get communication by email. Mm -hmm. They don't, you know, they can't call and talk to their coordinator like, hey, you know what? I'm actually feeling a little nervous. Yeah. Can you talk to me about how, when do I have to change my implants out? Yeah. Like that's a question that is common makes women nervous when they're, you know, thinking about yeah. getting an augmentation for the very first uh -huh. time, you know, maybe they went back and they talked about it with their family and now they have questions. Mm -hmm. So that's an easy question. You can call your coordinator and talk to them. Yeah, absolutely. But there's offices where they, there is no communication. Right. No, because they're busy well, chasing the dollar. Well, they're, then that's not the office that you need to go to. Exactly. <laughs> there's <laughs> plenty of us out there that, you know, are overly qualified in my opinion and that can answer those simple questions the staff that has been there for you know years and years they can answer that question easily without you having to go directly to the doctor have we touched on massages so let's talk about massages massages some places include them as some pl I've, 
I know I've worked at facilities that include at least one or sometimes two. They also include, you know, other heat treatments, but massages. Like the radio frequency. Yeah. Okay. I think massages can be like a whole episode, I, honestly. Yes. I think I might actually, yeah. I'm planning. That's That might tie into what's included in the quote. Right. So, so that mas- could be an extra. Massages. Uh-huh. And I know a lot of women are wondering, do I really need 10 massages? Do I really need 20 massages? Do I need, you know, is am I going to be happy if I don't do it? And I know there's kind of two stances on it for as far as surgeons. That you have your surgeons who are, you know, you very lenient. You only need a couple, maybe three or four massages and Mm-hmm. You know, every two weeks you should be fine. It's just releasing some of that drainage. And then there's the other side of doctors who are like, you need to have a massage like every yeah. other day for the next 30 days. But it depends on what you're doing and to what you've started with, because your friend is a different size than you are. Right. Right. So you're going to have a different surgery than your friend. So you're going to have a different recovery than your friend. You know, so it's good to lean on the staff and the doctor post-surgery, what is required or needed. But it's a great question on the front end to ask, is it included? Because am I going to be out this feet if I need it? The massages. Yeah. Yeah. What do you think, Melody? Depends on the procedure and the doctor. Mm -hmm. There are some doctors who it's non-negotiable. If you do not have the massages planned and ready, you're not having surgery with me because of the results that you want. And it also goes back to what you were saying as far as your results. Mm -hmm. So if you look at that wish picture and you know that that person was a doll of whoever and they did massages, (laughs) you go get the massages or don't expect the same results. And I do believe it's all about calibrating expectations. Yeah, absolutely. 100%. Perfectly said. And also from the office, also as a patient and making sure you're planning for that aftercare because it's just as important. Mm-hmm. as the surgeon and choosing the correct aftercare facility. I, that's a whole episode. That's a whole series. Oh, that's totally a whole is. F- massages, recovery uh, houses, recovery houses, yes. all of that. Those are some good topics, but they need their own episode. Yes. <laughs> Just know that that should be itemized out on the quote, if it's included or if it's not included so that you know that on the forefront and can plan for it. Just Mm -hmm. like prescriptions. If you want to factor that into your, you know, budget, then that's what you do. Another thing to make sure is listed out on your quote. If you've talked with your surgeon about implants, make sure your implants are listed in your quote. You don't want to, or if like for multiple procedures, if you had Uh a breast lift with augmentation and then you (laughs) looked at your quote and you, it was just, a breast lift, maybe your surgeon and you didn't communicate. Right. Right. He thought you didn't want implants, but you were okay or whatever. Mm -hmm. Make sure your implants are listed. Make sure everything is on your quote. Yeah. Because there's a lot of information given at the consultation, but that's a great point because if it's not on there, it's not included. It's not on there. It's not included. And yeah, the only person to be a smart consumer, (laughs) the person that's going to be upset is not going to be the office. It's going to be the patient. It's going to be you because you maybe you looked at your quote quickly and it was 10,500 and Mm -hmm. you're like, okay, I'm going to get my everything I wanted for this amount. And, you know, maybe you didn't look at the second page of that email and that was the second part of that quote. It should be in layman's terms, just basically like implants, saline, silicone. What is it? Yeah. Saline, silicone, that definitely needs to be listed on your quote as well. Yes. Okay. Blood work was another thing I want Mm -hmm. y'all to ask your surgeons. uh, Is my blood work included? Am I doing it here? Like now some offices are different because just in my, the office that I work for at ACPS, we have you go to your doctor to get blood work done, CBCs, electrolytes, clearance letter, EKGs, anything like that, depending on your medical history background. So we're not going to do it there at the office, but we want you to go to a physician that you're familiar with. We don't want you just to go to any place. Now, if it's just an EKG, you can go to like an urgent care and get an EKG. It's not a big deal. But if you have a standing history of medical conditions, we want you to go to someone that's familiar with your history. Definitely. 
In fact, set over. Yeah. <laughs> ASAP. ASAP. Two weeks before surgery, please. Okay. <laughs> <For> the... <laughs> 10 business days would be exact. No, just kidding. <laughs> please. Okay. okay. So, all right, ladies, I think <laughs> we can conclude with this episode of okay. going over your quote, kind of things to think about, things to look for. I think this is a good one that you should bring up. Oh, revisions. Oh, Revisions yeah. is very, very important. I had that written down here and I looked at yeah, it. <laughs> yeah, I was cheating. Okay, was I'm going to add here. that to our list. Okay. All right. Yes. Revisions. Okay. So when you're at your initial consultation, I feel that you basically just be upfront with your surgeon and say, hey, if something were to happen, what happens? Do I come back in? Do you fix it for free? You can just be blunt and just ask, ask that, you know, straightforward, you know, but usually the top surgeons, the ones that are, you know, seniored, they're going to stand behind their work, their ethical, and they're going to fix something as long as a patient is compliant and they're communicating. So say, for instance, you're not coming in for your follow-ups, you don't call the office if there's something wrong. You don't wear your faha. You don't wear your faha. <laughs> you're you you're go, not cleaning stuff that yeah, you way you should. Yeah, you go get in the jacuzzi eggs, a week after a tummy tuck. Egg, or you're, I've had a patient riding a horse a week after a tummy tuck. And I'm like, hello. How, <laughs> how is that even how? Po- how is that even possible? The I know. <laughs> the the <X-Rail>. X-Rail. <laughs> I was like, mind blown. I have, I'm telling you, like, I have so many stories, but at the same time, it's like, okay, if you're compliant with your surgeon and you communicate, we preach this every single episode, and you have a good contact person, like an MP or your coordinator or who, whoever your contact person is after surgery to say, hey, is this right? Is this wrong? <laughs> What's going on? Then you're, you know, you're touching base, you're catching up, you know, with the surgeon afterwards. Now, if you come back six months, 12 months later and are like, I this, never liked this, this since the beginning. This sucks. It doesn't, yeah, it doesn't work. I mean, nothing's going, you know, right or whatnot. And we're like, okay, well, you missed like five appointments. You <laughs> haven't communicated. How were we supposed to know? We thought everything was good. No news is good news kind of situation. Mm-hmm. Right. So if, as long as you're communicating, I think the best surgeons will stand behind their work and they're going to take you back into the OR to do those little tweaks here and there. And what's needed. not included in a revision is a BBL round two. No. no the, uh-uh. A BBL round two <laughs> Absolutely is its own not. procedure. Yes. It's not that the fat it didn't take. take. It's not that yeah. they didn't put in enough. It's yeah. a lot of patients need two rounds to get their, what they are looking for. Well, it depends because some patients want the Kim K, you know, they want a completely different shape. Others just want to fill in some divots. Mm -hmm. So those are the ones that are usually the first go round. The other ones, they're swollen (laughs) (laughs) after surgery. They get the Kim K right going on. And they're like, wait, the swelling went down. I, I still it. want yes. more. Yes. It's kind of like the implants when you get yes. them too big. Right. Yes. Yeah. And then they come back and they're like, wait, I still wanted more. I, I liked it how it was. Size. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I think it just depends on the patient. But for sure, if you want something that's super augmented on the BBL situation, you might need a couple of rounds. Yeah. Who knows? So, And that's not included in a revision. No, right. that's not. And revision, I think some patients they deem it as a bad thing, Mm -hmm. but some patients deem revision. They just want more (laughs) because you want more. Doesn't mean it's a revision. It's the, the surgeon didn't do anything wrong. You look great. Your shape's great. You know, you just want a little bit more. You just want a little bit more. Okay, fine. Well, you're going to have to pay for a little bit more, just like you would if you were to go to a coffee shop. Yeah. Right. And you wanted a little bit more coffee. That's right. right. That's right. (laughs) All right, ladies, can y'all think of anything that we need to tell our patients before we go from this episode? I think taking notes, that's going to be a good thing. Put something by your bedside. I think we've spoke on this before. Put something by your bedside. Or on your phone. So when you get to the appointment, you have a checklist of what to ask because you're going to forget some things. Life happens and we have a million things going through our heads. I'm making, I'm making them a 
yeah. initial consultation question PDF for yeah, them to exactly. print and take it's to like, your I love it. Like I could literally just go down the list. Like you just ask this, 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 and this, and then decide if you want to. Yeah. Cause then that's when forward. you can look at your three surgeons and compare. Yeah, exactly. Okay, this is what this price was. What was included here? Uh huh. And I kind of, what am I willing to yeah. take on, mm-hmm. you know, cause some patients and not to harp on this too much, but the penny pinchers, that's okay. You know, everyone has a budget, but as long as you know what you're setting up for, and you're okay with that. And the surgeon is a board certified plastic surgeon. It's okay. You'll be fine. Don't don't feel bad that you're penny pitching. You're being, you know. You're, you're, if you can only do one procedure. Yeah. Do the procedure that's going to make the you most happy. change for you. Yeah. And that's going right. to make you the happiest. For yeah. example, if you're struggling between, if you got a quote for a mommy makeover and you want to do your tummy, but mm-hmm. your breasts, you know, you want to do a breast lift. My what I would always tell my patients is you can put those boobies in a bra, <laughs> right? But you can you lift them up. Yeah. You can like <laughs> lift them up. You can put them in a bra. Yeah. You can stuff them. You can. There's Victoria's Secret. Like we can yeah. work with your boobs, but your tummy. Yeah. You can only wear Spanx, you know, so oh. much. You can only. Yeah, so we live in Houston. Especially it's here. Hot, I was right? going to say hot. our last episode, I think I was like, it's Houston. Like, dude, we have no cold season. <laughs> It's hot year Except round. One week in February. Yeah, right. right? Exactly. February, we froze. <laughs> Literally, the city froze. It froze. It was for my birthday, but you know, <laughs> you're welcome. <laughs> okay, so let's just recap. Okay, what we talked about in this episode is what is included in your quote. Mm-hmm. Make sure you ask. Yes. Every doc is different. Mm-hmm. What is 360? Make sure everything is kind of spelled out on your quote. Yeah. Because 360, like we said earlier, for one doctor is different from another doctor. Mm-hmm. So that's why Mavi saying that it's really, that's a specific question to ask your coordinator or your doctor because every doctor is different. It's almost like a marketing term, just like mommy makeover. 360 is a marketing term. So every doctor deems it different. Mm hmm. That's right. We also talked about Xperl being gold. Yes, yes. <laughs> it is. Yes. We talked about quality over quantity. Yes. If, make sure that you're looking for quality work from when you feel comfortable and you feel like, OK, they're going to take care of me. Mm-hmm. I feel good. That's what you want, because yeah. if you trust your surgeon before surgery, you're going to have to trust them. You're going to have confidence. Yeah, you're going to have confidence in what they're telling you when they're holding your hand and they're telling you it's just swelling. It's going to go down. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) It's okay. okay. You're going to trust the process. That's normal. We haven't. Yeah, we haven't. (laughs) We haven't been in the business for doing this for 30 plus years for nothing. You know, Yep. exactly. Yeah. Okay. We also talked about massages and Uh calibrating expectations. Right. I think Melody, you brought up a really good point with that. Yeah. Calibrating expectations. (laughs) High five on that. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, We talked about blood work. Make sure your blood work is either included or they're they're telling you what type of blood Mm -hmm. work you need. Yeah. If so, the anesthesia parameters basically correct. You just have to know on the forefront so that you give that information to the practice ahead of time so that the anesthesiologist or the hospital can clear you. So that's why blood work is very important. If you are going to have plastic surgery and your plastic surgeon or your surgeon, Mm -hmm. whoever you're seeing, because most plastic surgeons will have you get blood work. But if your surgeon is not asking you for blood work, you should be asking why, Mm -hmm. why am I not getting blood work? Because those results, your anesthesiologist is looking at. Right. And they're making decisions on what they're giving you by, Mm -hmm. you know, what they're looking or what they're looking at. What Now, if you're a healthy patient and you don't have any medical conditions, say, okay, let's hypothetically, you're 21 years old. You don't have any medical conditions. You're not on any prescriptions. We typically wouldn't say you have to get something. But go get a checkup. You're going to have a general anesthesia. Like my recommendation is. Yeah. Go get a checkup. You don't know what you don't know. So you don't know that your blood is a certain, you know, level if you've never checked your blood work. Right. You know, this actually this brings up a very good thought. I just (laughs) thought of this. 
where this story kind of comes into play, where a patient who waited until the very, very last minute to mm-hmm. get her blood work and she was super young, healthy. It was just lipo 360 BBL. The morning of surgery, the doctor was looking over her blood work uh-huh. and saw that there was some sort of anomaly with her hemoglobin and sent extra labs like yeah. before the surgery and found out that actually the girl had some sort of clotting disorder. Wow, and really? so it was caught before yeah. surgery. But those are the things that the type of things yeah. that are so crucial to know before you get yeah. under the knife. So that goes back to you don't know what you don't know. Use that in every situation. You can use that in every aspect of your life. I agree. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> but specifically for this, because if a patient, they've never had any surgery, they are super young, they don't take any medications, no prescriptions, you know, even though the office says you don't need any blood work. It, what's it going to hurt to just go get a checkup? I mean, just go to your primary just go, care. Yeah, your like, internist. Hey, just uh-huh. give me a full workup. Full workup. I'm going to have general anesthesia electively. Mm-hmm. You don't have to disclose what you're doing. <laughs> <laughs> you can be private and, you know, just get tested out. I think that's good. All right. I think that's it. You guys, next episode, we're going to have Melody and Annalisa, but we're going to talk about, okay. How are we going to pay for this? (laughs) (laughs) Bye. Bye. (laughs) Later. (laughs) I would like to end this episode with a huge thank you to all of our listeners. If you enjoyed this podcast, make sure to subscribe to Big Butts No Lies Podcast and follow us on Instagram at Big Butts No Lies Podcast. If you have a topic you want me to cover, please send it to the DM. If you know anyone on their plastic surgery journey, be sure to recommend them the show. You can also visit us on our website, bigbuttsnolies.com. You'll see the online surgical recovery store. We're adding new items all the time. If there's something you think I need to have on there, send me a DM. (laughs) Don't forget to leave us a five-star rating on Apple Podcasts. And don't forget, new episodes every Monday. I'll see you then.